Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we're going to focus specifically on provisioning an RDS database, touching on topics that include private subnets and SSH tunneling, how to launch an RDS MySQL database, how to connect to an RDS MySQL database, and then lastly, again, a Project Omega requirement check since this will be the final lesson for this section. So to get started, let's just conceptually understand what we're going to do here. Let's say that we have our dev team, and once we have the RDS database set up, they are going to need to be able to access it. And they're going to need to do that from their work computers in the office. So it's going to be computers, or they're going to need access to the RDS database from computers that are outside of the VPC. So they're going to be coming in through the internet. But one of the interesting things that we've been talking about to this point is that we're going to launch an RDS instance in a private subnet. Now, a private subnet, up to this point, we've always stated, does not have a route to the internet, meaning that people using computers out on the internet can't get access to instances in a private subnet and vice versa. Information in a private subnet can't go out to people on the internet. So there is a way to work around that, to have a special way to get into private subnets, and that is called SSH tunneling. So what we're going to do here is we are going to create a tunnel through our public subnet and through an EC2 instance to the RDS instance in a private subnet. And the reason we can do that is because we are going to publicly connect to our EC2 instance, the one that we created in the last section. But then once connected to the EC2 instance, we are going to connect internally through the EC2 instance to the RDS instance. And you can do this because if you remember, regardless of whether or not a route table has an internet gateway associated with it, internally, all instances can talk to and communicate with each other regardless of whether or not they're in a public or private subnet. So we're using the EC2 instance as a pathway to reach an RDS instance in a private subnet, and this is called SSH tunneling. Okay, so now let's move on to actually configuring and launching our RDS MySQL database. The first thing we actually need to do is to create a subnet group. So we need to identify our two private subnets and isolate those into a group that our RDS instance is going to be provisioned into. So I'm going to click on subnet groups here and create a subnet group. Let me give this a name. I'll call it essentials subgroup description. I'll just copy and paste. VPC, we have one only one VPC, so I will select those. For availability zones, now I need to select the two availability zones that our private subnets are in. So I'm actually not sure, I don't remember exactly which one they are in, so we can just open up in another tab the VPC section and go take a look and verify which availability zones our two private subnets are in. So I'll click on subnets. Uh, let me just sort here. So private subnet four and private subnet three, those are the two subnets that we want, and those are in availability zones 1D and 1E. So I can click on 1D, select the subnet, add that to the group, and then select 1E, and select that subnet and add it to the group. Okay, perfect. Click create. Now that we have our subnet group created, we can go back to instances and launch our database instant. Going to select MySQL. And if we want to use free tier, which we do in this case, you need to select the dev test MySQL option. Anything else, anything for production, you are going to be charged for. Okay, so now a nice thing that they offer here is the ability to click this toggle here and it will only limit these options to those available for RDS free tier. So it already pre-populated this part with things that we can use without being charged. We do, however, have an option for instance class. An instance class is very similar to EC2 instance class in that you are selecting the CPU and the hardware configuration and RAM for your instance. In this case, it's a database instance. So I'm going to select this one here. 
storage type, general purpose SSD, that's fine. The allocated storage is fine. I then need to give the database a instance identifier, a username and a password. So I'll call this essentials database. I'll give the username of admin and the password. Very important that you remember or record the username and password for your database instance because this is what you're going to be using to log into it. Go to next steps. For VPC, this is the VPC that we're using. That's the only one that's selected. For subnet group, make sure to select the subnet group that we just created. For publicly accessible, we want this to be set to no because again, if we were to put publicly accessible on this, that would give it a public IP address. And we don't want this to have a public IP address. We're only going to be communicating internally with this particular RDS instance. For availability zone, you can select no preference because it's going to choose an availability zone based on the subnets that we have in our subnet group. And then for VPC security groups, one of the things you have to be very careful of here is that RDS communicates over port 3306. So that means that a security group that you assign to this RDS instance needs to have that port open. So if I just click on create a new security group here, it will create a new security group for me with 3306 as an allow option. So next, I will give the database a name. I'll use the same name that I did earlier for the identifier, which was Essentials uh, Database. And then looking down through here, we'll just leave the rest of these options as default. So now let's launch the database. And we'll click on view your database instances. Now this is creating, and this is going to take a while. This can take anywhere from five to 10 minutes or longer, depending on what you have provisioned. So I'm going to stop the recording at this moment and come back when this is complete. Okay, I am back and as you see here, our RDS MySQL database is now available. So let's click on it and take a look at some of the information that it provides to us. So first, let's click here on this tab and this is where you're going to find a bulk of the information for your database, including many of the options that we chose when we were launching the instance itself. One of the things that you want to note down here are the endpoint and port because we're gonna need those in order to connect to this in a second. And one of the things that you really have to know about using RDS instances is that there is no GUI in the AWS console. You have to use third party software to log in and actually use the databases. So I'm gonna show you how to do that now as we move into the next slide of this section. So I'm going to again pause the video because I'm going to bring in another application to our screen. Okay, so I'm back and what I've done here is obviously here I have our Project Omega interactive guide document. On the left side here, this is still the AWS console up here and I will be using this to kind of jump in and grab some information as needed. But this down here is MySQL Workbench, which I have downloaded and installed on my computer. And this is what is needed in order to access RDS MySQL databases, specifically the type that we launched. Now, if you decide to go in and launch a different database in RDS, then that may require a different piece of software and instructions will be within each one of those sections in AWS if you decide to do that on your own. But for this example, we're using the MySQL RDS database and that requires MySQL Workbench, or at least that is the most popular option to use to log in. So I open MySQL Workbench and I need to set up a new connection in MySQL Workbench. So I'm gonna click on this right here to open a new connection. And I have to give the connection a name. So Essentials RDS, I'll call it. For connection method, we want to select standard TCP slash IP over SSH. This is what is going to allow us to do the SSH tunneling. So if you remember, this is what we are now setting up, this tunnel through this EC2 instance. So now that we have our connection method selected, 
we have to put in the host name, the SSH host name. And this is going to be the public IP address of the EC2 instance that we are going to use to tunnel through. So I have to go back to the AWS console. I have my RDS tab here. This is the VPC tab, but I'm going to back out of this and go into EC2. And I'm going to grab the public IP address of my running EC2 instance. Instances, there we go. Refresh the page. Here is our running instance, and here is our public IP address. So I'm going to grab that, copy it. I'll shrink this back up, and I'll input that here. For SSH user, now this we have not covered yet, but I'm going to jump in and do that now, switching back over here to the AWS console. So back to the instance. Now, when you go to connect to an instance, and remember in the previous section on EC2, we used this command to log in to SSH in to the EC2 instance. Well, if you look at this command closely, this is actually the username right here. This is the default username. So this is what I need to grab. And I'm gonna put that right here. There is no password for the EC2 instance, but I do need to provide the SSH key file. This was the .pem key file that we had to use the chmod command on when logging in to the EC2 instance. So I'm going to find that on my computer, which is right here in my downloads, and click open and OK. Or not OK yet, but just click open, and there it is. Next, for my SQL host name, this is now where we need to go back up here, back to the RDS side, and this is where I'm going to grab the writer endpoint. So this right here, I'm going to copy that to my clipboard and paste that right here in the host name. For MySQL server port, we'll leave that as 3306. For username, I now need to put in the username that I used when I created the RDS instance, which was admin. And then for password, I'm going to click to store in keychain, and this is going to be the password that I created when I created the RDS instance. We'll click OK. And now that we have all of our information set, what I want to do is test the connection. OK, and we'll give this a second as it is testing out this connection. Whoop, uh-oh. OK, so we have a bit of an issue here. We got an error which said that it failed to connect. So whenever we see a failed to connect issue, the first thing that we want to do is reevaluate or take a look at our security groups, network access control list, route tables, and internet gateway. Make sure that all of those are working correctly or have the right routes and ports open for our data to flow and communicate correctly. So let's jump back over here and take a look. We'll start with security groups. Go back over to EC2 and let's take a look at security groups. So looking at this, let's first look at the security group that we have associated with our RDS instance, which is this one right here. And to double check that, you can always go back to RDS and you can look and see security groups here, RDS Launch Wizard 1. So RDS Launch Wizard 1, let's take a look here. Okay, so for inbound, we have MySQL Aurora as a type, TCP, the proper port. Okay, here's what's going on. When AWS automatically created the security group for us, it restricted the source data to only this IP address. Now, since I'm trying to log in from my personal computer, that has a different IP address than this. So it's rejecting it because the source IP address is not the same. So all we need to do, and this should work, is just to change this to all sources. We'll click Save. Okay, we'll jump back over here and let's test this connection again and see what happens. Hey, successful! We made our MySQL connection. So perfect. Then we'll click OK. And now we have a working connection. And here we go. And this is how you will use and manipulate the RDS database. So. Now jumping back to over here, we have finished the basic steps for connecting to an RDS database. And just to recap, we are using SSH tunneling. So right now, this connection here to the database is me sitting at my computer outside of the VPC 
going over the internet, in through the internet gateway, through the route table, through the network access control list, through the security group, into the EC2 server, then the EC2 server is then communicating through another route table into the private subnet of our RDS instance. And then the information is coming back out the exact same way. So before we complete this lesson and section, let's take a look at our Project Omega infrastructure requirements. And for this, we needed a database to store and catalog data. We needed an active RDS MySQL database with a verified connection status. We have that. The database must be in a private subnet and accessible via SSH tunneling. We have also done that. So perfect, we have, finished, we have fulfilled all of the requirements for Project Omega. So to recap, in AWS Essential Section 6, we learned about RDS and DynamoDB. We had a nice overview of AWS's core database offerings. We conceptually talked about SQL and NoSQL databases. We went over some database pricing options and overviews and how to provision and connect to an RDS database using SSH tunneling. So now back to our main diagram, we are really starting to fill this in. And next we are going to move on to SNS. So with that, I will conclude this lesson and conclude this section. Thank you for watching. You may now move on.